This video will demonstrate the process of running the setup and analysis routine for back drilling from within the Allegro PCB editor. Both manually creating back drill pairs and using the analysis section to create back drill pairs will be shown. So this is the design that we're going to run back drilling on. First, let's make sure we have uh, the properties defined to identify our back drill candidates. So I will use the display properties command. We'll look for everything with back drill. I actually went back, back drill max plated through stub. If I show the value on that, you can see we all there's a lot of nets that have maximum stub of 10 mils. So those are going to be our candidates for back drilling. So to run the back drill routine, we go under manufacture, NC, back drill setup and analysis. The first time you run that, you'll get this initial pair. In this case, just to start off, we're going to generate pairs for both sides of the board. So we'll go from the top layer all the way down to next to last, and from the bottom layer up to next to the top. We'll see OK. And basically what happened is it generated a pair for every single combination there. Whether there's going to be plunges there or not, doesn't matter. We're just going to create those pairs. We can take a quick look at this and run the analyze command. And I'm just going to close this log file, take a look at it later on. And we can see that in this case, not every single pair is utilized. So it was just a quick way we can manually do things. We can also manually create pairs. So I'm going to read, delete everything. So I'm going to right mouse button, delete all. And I'm going to insert some pairs myself. Let's get out of here first and restart. I'm going to skip that because I'm going to manually create my drilling pairs. So I'm going to create a new pair set. And the starting layer for this pair, this set, is going to be the top layer. And now I'm going to specify which objects I want to do, which are both pins and vias, and then where my two layer is. I'm just going to pick a few just to show the general use model. So we'll go to layer 4P. I'll right mouse button. I'll insert another pair going from top to five, just do a couple of more. Again, the idea here is I'm just manually creating which plunging pairs I want the system to do. In order to do those, I would have to make sure as a final step that I turned on the enable option. That was how we manually create pairs. We can also automatically create pairs through the analysis portion of the back drill. So we'll go into layer pair initialization to get into the analysis section. And again here in this form the two sections. The top section is basically the same as when we first started. We can just say, oh, go from the top to this layer and I'll create a pair for every single one in between there and same for the bottom. Or I can go through an analysis section. That's what we're gonna use in the bottom now. I can use an analysis to minimize my stub length or minimize my layer pairs. So let's do minimize electrical stub length. I'll hit the create button. That created all of my pairs. We'll close this down. And you'll see now that we have not as many pairs as before. These are just the ones that it needs to minimize the stub length. Now if we take a look at this, we, we have some potential problems here. We have a few of these pairs that don't have many plunges in it. And that's going to be expensive to do. We might want to try to get rid of those. So let's take a look at from top to layer 4P. You can see there's three plunges. If we hit the analyze button, it'll bring up the log file. I'm going to rearrange my windows here a little bit. If I scroll down my log file, it will tell me basically everything that it did, the cross sections. Here's the total number of plunges per layer all the codes that we'll get into later, anybody that couldn't create a back drill for, what the reason was, and then we have all of our back drill information. So remember we went to layer four, to 4P had three back plunges, back drill plunges. Let's zoom in to this point. Let me actually zoomed in here first. Let me resume to that point. And basically what's going on here is 
this is routed on layer 5, and this is routed on layer 6. So that's why it needs to get to layer 4P to delete that stub. So if I move this trace up a couple of layers, it will no longer require to drill to there because the trace will exist above layer 5. So I'm going to just move this connect line. Then I'm going to move it to layer 3. I'm going to do this a couple of times because here's, uh, if I scroll out here, they can see that was layer 4P. Here's another one. I'm going to do the same thing there. And I have one more. And it should be, if I can get over here all the way down to the bottom of this form here. There's the last layer of 4P. It's right there, and I'll move this one, that connect line, to layer 3. So we close the log file now, and we reanalyze. And there's our analysis form again. We can just close it down. Notice that that got rid of all of those three plunges on there, so that is no longer required drill pair so I can just disable that. Let's just check a couple more things in our back drill setup analysis form. We have the pad stack parameters and this is going to be used up top here if I do not have any data in my pad stacks defined for back drilling. If you remember in the previous video we defined pad data for the back drilling and then we brought that into the design. You can see down here, there is user-defined back drill data. And if we hit the Details button, you can see the top half is what the default ones that do not have any back drill data. And down at the bottom is the two pads that we modified before. And that's the actual back drill data for those pads in the design. We can close that. Take a look real quickly at the flag codes. Again, these are just letters that represent what happened in the back drilling area that you can visually see. For example, if you look at the R, it says their pin and via has no routed connections. If I zoom back up to the top original area, notice there's some R's right here. So if I go and do a show element of that net, notice that there's only two pins and one unrouted connection. So there is no connection there. All right, let's go back to layer pairs one more time. So at this point, we're, if we, this is what we wanted, we're ready to go. We actually have to hit the back drill button. That'll actually go through and mark everything. It also will put in all the keep outs that were defined in my pad stacks. You can see it says back drilling is up to date. You can also tell by going to display status. There's a section down at the bottom for out of date back drills. In this case, since I just ran it, our back drill is up to date. This concludes the video that demonstrated the process of running the setup and analysis routine for backdrilling from within the Allegro PCB editor.